Now let's take a look how to brew wrapper using the swirling water flowing method. The difference between wrapper and a fermented brewer, just like the name, is that one is fermented, and the other is unfermented. Brewer tea is made from one kind of chameleon sinensis plant in Yunnan Province, China. In Chinese, we call it Yunnan Large Leaf Tea. This kind of chameleon sinensis characteristically has much larger leaf. Than any other kind of chameleon sinensis, it has very strong nutrients, and it can used to make pure tea, Yunnan black tea, Yunnan green tea, Yunnan white tea, and some people even try to use it to make Yunnan oolong tea. Now let's take a look at this unique wrapper, which is made from the rattan tea tree. This tea comes from the ancient tea tree, which is highly unique. And unlike most other tea trees, in that the branches are shaped like rattan, it even has elasticity similar to rattan tree. Chinese farmer believe the qi from this tree is like that of the rattan tree. As we already know, brewing rapper tea, green tea, or white tea using the swirling water flowing method. Is very good for our fire element organs, the heart, and the small intensity. Now let's take a look how we brew it. In traditional processing, also very common to press wrapper into cake shapes or other shapes. The main reason is for convenient long-term storage. In traditional history. Fermented pure actually originally came from wrapper stored for a long time to allow it to naturally ferment it. But of course, today people use the fattest fermentation methods to force the leaves to ferment it quickly. If you're interested in learning more about how those teas are made, you can check my first level course, the foundations of Chinese tea. And other upcoming courses. Now, we are going to use the tea needle to break the tea cake for brewing. Lots of people, when they get a big cake of tea, have no idea how to break it up for brewing. They find it more convenient just to brew tea from bags. Actually, if you know how to use the right utensil, you will find it to be a lot of fun. And drinking this kind of ancient tea tree tea leaves is way more healthier than using tea bags. First, after you open the packaging, check the shape of the tea cake. If the shape of the leaves is clearly visible, and the tea cake shape was pressed into a nice smooth shape, those are first sign that the tea cake was produced properly. Now we are going to use the tea needle to break off leaves for brewing. Lots of people see this needle and are afraid to use it. Indeed, if you don't hold it in the right position, it is very dangerous and it could hurt your hand. Lots of people hold it in a very wrong way. Allow me to show you how to hold the tea needle properly. First, check the thickness of the tea cake. Remember to always push the needle into the middle of the edge of the tea cake. That's because after you break off the leaves, you can see from the outside to the inside of the middle, allowing you to inspect whether the quality of the tea leaves is the same or not. Holding the tea needle like I am. Your index finger is the key to control the needle as you guide it to the position you want. Use the index finger to hold the top of the needle, then slowly push the needle into the tea cake with your palm until you feel the needle reach a deep enough position. Slightly pry up the leaves, then peel off the some loose leaves. This way, you can still keep the tea cake in a nice shape, 
which is good for continued storage. Usually, natural paper is good for packing tea cakes. It can be wrapped around the tea cake to absorb moisture, and it's easy to remove the tea cake and repack it again. Now, I'm going to use another teapot to brew this rubber tea. Remember, we're going to brew this tea using the swirling water flowing method. So from now on, pouring the water counterclockwise is the key to proper brewing. If you wonder why we don't pour water clockwise instead of counterclockwise, please check my second level course Chinese tea ceremony. Now let's first wash the warm up the teaware. Because we are going to brew the tea using the swirling water flowing method. When we pour the liquid out, we should find the way to make the water flow in the swirling manner. Since the funnel shape of the tea filter is exactly the shape used to create a swirl, the only difference between a waterfall and a swirl is that before we pour the water from the teapot, we find a point on the wall of the tea filter. Then. We move the stream around the teapot as we pour it counterclockwise. The water will follow the funnel shape of the tea filter to start rotating in the swirling before it naturally flows down into the fear cup. Pouring the water from the fear cup into the teacup. In the counterclockwise, creates a sort of swirling concept too. Now, we can pick up the paper to put the tea into the teapot. At this moment, this paper can conveniently be used as a tea holder. You can also open up the paper to show the tea leaves to your audience or clients before you put the tea into the teapot. Later, we can use the paper to pack up the tea cake again for storage. Now, we pour the boiled water into the teapot to wash the tea leaves. Again, because it's pressed pour, I'm using high temperature water around 97 degrees Celsius. We are using a large teapot to brew this pressed wrapper, so we can wash the open up the tea using two different methods. One way is like we are brewing fermented pour, filling the teapot with the boiled water, so it can infuse and easily open up. Another way is to pour the teapot half full of water, which just about covers up the leaves. Then gently take the teapot and slowly turn it and let the heat transfer to the tea leaves. Then we can pour the liquid into the fear cup. Because it's raw pretty and didn't go through the fermentation step of the processing, when we pour the liquid from the teapot. We should remember to open up the lid of the teapot to let heat out, keeping the leaves as fresh as possible without overheating them. As without the fermentation step, the leaves are much more delicate. Then pour the hot water from the teacup. Again. 
pour the tea liquid into the teacup in a counterclockwise direction. After that, when the lid cools down a little bit, we can smell the aroma of tea on the lid of teapot. Now we can pour the water for brewing for drinking. As you can see, when we pour water into teapot in a counterclockwise direction, we can create a slight swirl movement with the water just like a swirl. This way gets tea leaves to start flowing and turning around in the water. Fill the teapot and pour hot water on the outside of the teapot to keep the inside and outside of teapot the same temperature. Now, I hope you can see more clearly that when we pour the liquid in a counterclockwise direction into fair cup through the funnel-shaped tea filter, the water moves exactly like a swirl, which is a key to healing our fire element organs, the heart and small intensity. Pour the previous liquid from teacup, and you can smell the aroma of tea from the teacup before you drink it. Again, pouring the tea liquid into the teacup in a counterclockwise direction so that you can create a swirl flow of the tea liquid in the last step of brewing as well. After a few sips of the tea liquid, you can smell the aroma of the tea from the lid of the teapot again to confirm if the aroma of the tea and taste match. And the smell and aroma from lid can help you to more accurately access the quality of the tea's flavor. <laughs> yes, that's right. Don't forget to slightly open the lid of the teapot to make sure it won't overheat. Then, we can continue brewing for drinking until the taste gets too light. <laughs>